Welcome back to the Tracy Hamlin Show. We are having an amazing discussion with voiceover artist, Rosa Howard. When we went to commercial break, Rosa, you were talking about the importance of doing your research and having a vocal coach. Can you expand on that a little more? Yes, yes. Um, and, and what I'm saying about that is that you need to have a vocal coach, someone who can help you understand how to deliver your lines, help you to understand the different genres of voiceover and what goes into each one of those. And what I did before I hung out my shingle and said, I'm available for business, I actually worked with someone for probably about six months. And what we would do every week is that person would give me homework assignments and he, we would work on different genres. I would come back and read those things for him and he would give me feedback. I would come back and read them again. And uh, basically he would just teach me, teach mm -hmm. me about the industry, teach me how to deliver. And I, that's, what, that's what a vocal coach does. And I think it is critical if mm -hmm. you're going to get into this industry that you get a vocal coach. So are there other artists that you could study or, you know what I mean? Was it just the vocal coach or were, you know, did you study particular commercials or were there particular voiceover artists that you were able to study? How does that work? Oh, absolutely. That's, and, and that I think comes in researching because what happens is we all have, might have a favorite commercial, something that you see on TV that catches your eye or catches your ear and you hear that person's voice. Uh, you don't know who it is, but when you start to do your research, you start to look up different voice actors web pages and mm -hmm. some of them will have on there things that they've done works that they've done. And you can do a little more research to find mm -hmm. out uh, particular TV spots that they might have done or other other works and you, you, and what I did was look up different voice actors web pages and then find out more information about them and study them. I would listen to TV commercials, I would listen to narrations, audiobooks, things that I liked, and you'll find things you like and things that are not quite you. So, you know, you don't want to go that route, uh, maybe for someone else, but it doesn't work for you. The, the, um, the delivery doesn't work for you. So you find things that you like and you listen to them and that's part of your research. Great. So how long did it take from you deciding that you were go going to be a voiceover artist, start a small business to actually launching the business? How much time was in between there? It was about nine months. It was about nine months because um, I decided that I wanted to do it. And I went through the whole research phase, went through the training phase. Then I had to set up my home studio, get all my equipment in place. Uh, so after about nine months, I was ready to start doing some actual work. That. And so, and you got, so what was your first job? Do you remember? My first job was for a local corporation and mm -hmm. um, I did a narration for an event that they were having. Nice. So I know that you, you're staying quite busy. Can you talk about some of the projects? Like, are there things that we would have heard and, you know, that we would remember that that was your voice? Well, let's see. Uh, I, you know, I have been so fortunate uh, throughout this process. Coming into it, you know, I was told that, the mar that it's saturated and that, you know, you're not going to get new work and, you know, don't listen to that. I, I didn't listen to it, fortunately, and I have been so blessed to to get um, lots of work and I've actually done probably hundreds of projects now. Um, as far as things you might have heard me on, I have a TV show on Amazon Prime now. It's PBS production called mm -hmm. Power Trip, the Story of Energy. I narrated that uh, six series documentary and we're going to be doing season, season two soon. Yay. Hi, um, very did some promos for the Olympics. Uh, the Tokyo Olympics coming July 23rd, brought to you on NBC by XXX Company. Yeah, you might have heard, heard that. that. Right. <laughs> <laughs> that is, and so what is one of your favorite projects that you're like, I need to get more of that? Hmm, one of my favorite projects. Mm -hmm. Actually, I loved doing the TV documentary. I, I learned a lot during the process about yeah. sources of energy, but also I just enjoyed doing it. Um, I love having it out there. It's great. I would love to do more of that. 
goodness. So what is your process? Like, for instance, if you're going to narrate a book, how do you prepare for something like that? Wow. That's a bit, you would pick that one, wouldn't you? Um, actually, a lot goes into that, uh, getting ready to narrate a book, because uh, the first thing you need to do, of course, is read the book. Read the right. book, um, determine if there are any characters in the book or what characters there are in the book. Because sometimes what I have focused mainly on is nonfiction. So I haven't had a lot of characters to do. But if you're doing a fictional work, of course, they're going to be characters. So you need to outline those characters and understand uh, their, their voices and who they are and, and how you're going to voice them. Um, that there's a lot of preparation that goes into. There's also a lot of research that goes into doing an audiobook, making sure that you understand the pronunciations. And that's in any voiceover work, though, uh, checking the pronunciations and um, and particularly with audiobooks, knowing what's going to happen later down the line in the book because i've i've been following a lot of audiobook uh, narrators who when they first started out said they didn't read the book and oh. got down to the end of the book and learned something about the character that they should have incorporated in the beginning and had to go back and re-record so um again it comes back to the whole research thing right uh, you just have to do a lot of research to prepare for it mm -hmm. so as a small business owner what has been some of your greatest challenges Marketing, I think, is probably the biggest challenge in um, particularly in this industry, because mm -hmm. you're relying a lot on yourself uh, to, to get out and spread the word about what you do, target the appropriate businesses who might need your services. And mm -hmm. that, I think, is probably the toughest the toughest part of this because I brought into this, you know, financial skills and business skills and that kind of thing, but not so much the marketing piece. Um, so just getting out and networking. Yeah, networking. Wow. Um, doing that, that part of it is probably the most difficult part. Mm -hmm. So are there any nuggets of information that you can share with someone who is sitting at home watching this conversation thinking, I need to step out on faith and start my own business, invest in myself. Do you have any nuggets of insp inspiration to share? You know, I, this, this is my nugget of inspiration. Follow your dream. Mm -hmm. Don't let anyone tell you that you can't do something. Because again, if I had listened to naysayers who told me that everything, that this was a saturated field and that I would not have any success in it. I would not be where I am today. So mm -hmm. follow your dream. Don't let anyone tell you you can't. And I am probably the worst athlete in the world. However, when I'm hesitant about whether I should move forward with something, I always fall back on this old sports proverb that says, you miss 100% of the shots that you don't take. So always, always take a shot. You don't know where it's going to land or, or how it's going to end. But if you don't take a shot, you know that there will be no success whatsoever. So take your shot and follow your dream. That is really great. I love that. So what is next for Rosa Howard, voiceover artist? What's next? What is next for Rosa Howard, voiceover? Well, um, Right now, I am again getting ready to do season two of the um, of the television show that I did. Mm -hmm. I am preparing to do more audiobooks mm -hmm. and um, and some commercial work. So I'm pretty excited about things that are coming up. So your plate is going to be full, um, <laughs> quite full. How long does it take to do a book? Oh gosh, it depends on your experience level how long it takes to do a book. Um, but if the book, if it's a 10 hour book, you can usually count on, um, well, I won't say usually, but probably an average, it's probably gonna take you two to three hours for every um, hour that that book is. And mm -hmm. the more experience that you have, the lower that you get that ratio down. So it, it could take quite a while to narrate an audio book, particularly if you're, just coming into the field. Wow, well, I can't wait to look out for you and, and hear what's next. Can you share your socials? How can some, somebody's interested in hiring you? Where should they go to find out more information? Where you should go to find out more information is rosa at rosahowardvo.com. 
That is the simplest way to get in touch with me is to just shoot me a message and tell me that you're interested in hiring me. Um, Rosa at rosahowardvo.com or you could go onto my website at rosahowardvo.com. There's a contact form there and it outlines all of the different genres of voiceover that I provide. Awesome. Well, Rosa, thank you so much. It has been fantastic having you here with us today. So we'll be on the lookout for Rosa Howard, voiceover artist. We're going to take a short break and we will be right back with composer, music educator, and pianist Quentin Walston. Stay right there. We'll be right back. Thank you so much, Rosa. Thank you, Tracy. Bye-bye.